I was raised in Kings Lynn and there was a fishmonger there who kept not only tropical fish but uh, also saltwater fish. Then he diversified into reptiles and I helped him and he used to acquire various alligators and pythons and I say that's where I learnt uh, and that's where I developed my interest. My getting to Malaya was just purely serendipity. I happened to work in a labor laboratory in London and it was there I saw the telephone number of a rubber growers association, rang them up and they, through that I, I got the offer of a couple of jobs at the age of 20. I saw the job as a passport to my getting to where the tropics were, the tropical animals. David Attenborough was already on black and white television when I was uh, a teenager, so that dates him a bit. And Gerald Dole had written his first books and they enthused me as much as anything. Uh, but the David Attenborough told me on the phone, you know, his suggested route was university and uh, the formal way of moving and I didn't want university. I got out to there, out to the tropics as soon as I could. Well, when I went out, this was very early 1960s, zoos were still uh, looking for stocks because their zoos' stocks had been decimated by the war and there wasn't quite the concern about conservation and habitat loss that there is now. Uh, but nowadays, of course, zoos are almost self-sufficient. They don't take animals from the wild. They uh, breed and interchange. But at the time, of course, zoos were very keen to get, for instance, crocodiles and large pythons and so on, which I supplied. And fortunately, the estates I was on were very, very close to rainforest and untouched rainforest so gibbons galore and it, it, there were tiger, elephant, rhino, not that you ever saw them, uh, very very rarely did you see them but uh, occasionally they would be caught and uh, I had some many rare animals brought to me by the aborigines and locals that found their way into zoos. <laughs> Don't forget that the Aborigines or the endemic people living in the jungle, they lived off them. They were a food source. Uh, at one particular occasion they brought me an animal which I couldn't even recognise. It took me a long time to determine that it was an extremely rare animal called an otter civet. Um, I went back to their village and said, oh, please, please, can I have some more? And they said, oh, we just ate the parents. So I ended up with just a, a one rare youngster. Yeah. After four year, first four year contract, I had six months paid leave and I could return to Europe by any way I wanted. So I elected to come back by sea and take animals back to European zoos. So I shipped uh, quantities of yeah, reasonable sized crocodiles and big pythons and a variety of poisonous snakes to European zoos on my leave. Yeah, the crocodiles were all crated and the pythons were crated and I chose in the particularly good boats, the Dutch tramp steamers, and picked the captains and they used to help me on board. They made swimming pools out of tarpaulin for the crocodiles and they were very, very good and uh, it was just Catching them at the end of the voyage and putting them back into crates was always a bit hairy. There were no drugs and no sophisticated equipment about then, so it was a matter of wrestling them, but only up to a certain size. <laughs> well, I saw a Chinese in Malaya once who had a, 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 a pond full of large crocodiles next to a chicken farm. And there was not a crocodile to be seen, and he threw a chicken in and it just exploded. But when he wanted to harvest them, uh, this Chinese, to my amazement, actually waded into the pond and felt around for the crocs on the bottom with his feet. And the crocs were, were, thought they were hidden and then they were hauled. He dipped down, put a rope on them and they were hauled out. So, for instance, when I was on board ship and the, uh, I had a tank full of crocodiles, they had to be individually caught up. The way I was able to get them was actually to flood the tank and walk in quietly amongst them and separate them off with my... I had several pairs of trousers on, I have to say, uh, and then sat upon them, yeah. But, uh, I, yeah, um, it, it, there were risks, and they are particularly strong, but I suppose a little bit like playing rugby. You know, if you don't want to get hurt, you have to go in hard.